A-O, A-A-O. Daylight come and we start the pod. Hey, oh, all starting. the podcasts. Potty, potty, cast, cast. It's a podcast and it's started. Ah, Jesus. I don't know why I committed to that so much. That was, at no point was that good. Um, This is Behind the Bastards, a podcast that's incompetently introduced by a hack and a fraud, i.e. me. Uh, And you know what? I had a great script. We were finally going to do the Will Wheaton episode. I wrote 40,000 words on it. Really, really jarring, horrifying stuff. But I'm so ashamed of that introduction. So ashamed that at the last minute, I'm canceling our normal guest. We're bringing on Garrison. He's reading an episode instead. Nobody gets the podcast episodes now because I'm ashamed. Garrison, Garrison, I, I was really Garrison. looking forward to the four-hour Will Wheaton podcast, but... Six hours. At Six yeah, hours. you know, honestly, I, I, I think it was too dark. I don't think Spotify would have put it up. There was just too high a body count. You know, we can talk about Mao or the British Empire or Hitler, but when you get to Will Wheaton, you know, uh-huh. that's that's a lot. That's a lot of corpses. That's a lot of corpses. Well, I'm- it's like several Rob Zombies worth of corpses. Um, Garrison's here. Hello. That was a house of a thousand. I, I do not know what so, that is. So, 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 I saw somebody that said that when Garrison and Chris come on, that they have to turn their podcast speed to half. Speed I know. You guys talk so uh-huh. Yeah, so we're fast. working on that. Yep. I mean, both of you and Chris are. Uh, no, I, th- I think that they sh- they need to get used to it because no, that's how the youth I've talk. Only, I, I think I think both Garrison and Chris need to slow down a bit. This is a process of learning. Everybody, everybody has a learning process with podcasting. That's. Why what we're doing I think here. it's great. We're 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 all we're all finding our voice. You look listen to the earlier episodes of this show. It took me some time. It takes everybody some time and they're doing great. Uh but yes, it is important to go slow when you're reading the, the, because the I good think thing, they're great. The good thing is that I've only had two shots of espresso this morning. So That's good. Oh, so you're not even awake. No. And it is morning for Garrison. We had to get him up. I, I had to get up with him at 11 a.m. yesterday, which was just a nightmare for oh, both geez, of us that's to the interview. Middle of the night for you. It was and it was worse because we were both interviewing someone whose work we yeah. admire. And that was just just the worst, in, just an in, absolute interviewing nightmare. a competent person as you're struggling to keep yeah. your eyes open is not super fun. Oh, and the moment he came on the screen, it was David Wallace Wells, author of The Uninhabitable Earth. The instant he came on the screen, I was like, oh, that's a fucking morning person. That's a guy who yep, gets up absolutely, nine in the goddamn absolutely. morning. Absolutely. Absolutely. No, earlier than nine in the well morning. too well-dressed, too coiffed. It was just, oh, I felt like such a piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> that is very um, true. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, that's, that's yeah, very this true. Is, well. Yeah. Um, well, anyway. This, this, <laughs> what are we talking about We're talking about, about, today, about amusement parks. Uh, as a matter of fact, um, now I, I actually really like amusement parks, uh, not mm-hmm. not so much as in like yeah. I enjoy being in them, but more like I find their whole like design, the, their structures, their engineering and like surrounding culture extremely fascinating. Yeah, I can see that. I can't. I've been to the beach with you on a number of occasions, Garrison. I can't fathom you at an amusement park. It's real funny. So maybe maybe the, the Star Wars Disney. So I, I'm excited. I, I've, I've, I've never never been to Disneyland, but like I, I I like learning about it and its whole like process. Uh, because I think it's like think, I can't imagine you like in board shorts at a Six Flags going down a water so slide. I've I've, I've never I've I've never worn board wrong. shorts, but I have gone to Six Flags. Um, when when I would take okay. when I would take trips uh, from Canada down to Texas to visit a family, one of the highlights was visiting um, Six Flags over Texas and Dallas. Um, and so I, I happened place. I happened to be a really big uh, like Looney Tunes and Batman fan because those were some of the those those were some of the few TV shows we yeah. were allowed to watch as kids. Yeah, um, Dallas is a Looney Tunes town for sure. And 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 the Six Flags there was was the first Six Flags. Um and it's you know it's 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 all like Warner properties and stuff. Yeah. Um so but yeah, but like I uh the, the best part for me was going to the Gotham City area with all of its like set dressing and Batman rides. Now, be- before you go like poo-pooing how Batman's a fascist or whatever, which he's not sometimes. He's he's sometimes not a fascist. There's actually there's a good there's a good video essay. Strong arguments there, Gary. <laughs> there's a there's a good video essay by a, a guy named Thought Slime about how Batman isn't always fashy, uh but he is sometimes. But any but the the the, the Batman at Six Flags is like the Tim Burton or like an- animated series one, so it's fine. Um but it also means like all of like the sets and architecture look really cool because it's like this like gothic um, like neo uh, like uh, Art Deco kind of stuff. Um, it's it's very fun. All, all this to say, the, the the main ride they had there was called Batman the Ride, and it was kind of like flying in the. 
Batwing, but on a roller coaster. It, it was the first ever inverted roller coaster. So like you're strapped into a hard harness and belt while sitting on a small seat and your legs are like dangling in the air. Um, it's a fun ride. Uh, but one of the things we talked about was that uh, Batman the Ride had uh, killed two people in its in its short oh, yeah. in its that, short history. That was always the best thing about Six Flags because as as a kid, when you go with your group of like your cousins, you all want to go to all of the rides that have killed people. So you like yes. look that shit up ahead of time to ride the rides that killed kids. Just <laughs> yeah. so you could be better than that kid. Uh-huh. Like ah, you fucking died on this ride, you loser. Like what are you doing? <laughs> so <laughs> dying on a ride. So but, but, but both both the Batman the Ride deaths happened the same way um people actually ventured uh past the fence into the off-limits area under the ride and riders dangling legs um hit people in the off-limits area and they died of blunt force trauma and a a one uh i think like a 17 year old on a youth group church trip was decapitated actually uh by the force i mean having been on a couple of youth group church trips that's the best case scenario for one of those really is you get decapitated and you don't have to get back on the bus with everybody (laughs) Uh, so Uh, these these deaths are not like 100 percent six flags's fault because like it was a fenced off area off limits but the track could have easily been higher to not have like this risk at all like you don't need people's legs close enough to the ground for this um and like i don't i think we've got enough people as it is so Seems like Six Flags did us all a sol- anyway. Sorry, you're doing just a, a casual manslaughter pill, okay? <laughs> 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 but like, I mean, amusement parks are kind of inherently dangerous. Um, you know, it, yes, they should. It, be. Yeah, you, you don't want to go to an amusement park that hasn't killed somebody. So, like, because then there's no there's no thrill. At the, at the, at the, at the, at the same Six Flags that I went to as a kid, um, so someone else died after uh, falling off a roller coaster called the Texas Giant. Oh yeah, the Texas Giant. Yeah, which oh, is which man, is that which, one sucks. Which is the biggest wooden roller coaster in the world. Um, and someone yeah. um, f- 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 fell into that and died. Only Texas, because m- m- normal people are like, well, if I want to go on the biggest roller coaster, I want to go on the biggest roller coaster. And Texas is like, yeah, well, what about the biggest wooden roller coaster? What if it's made out of trees? The entire, <laughs> the entire rest of the world goes, I don't really give a shit. That doesn't appeal to me at all. But Texas, it's like 80% of Texan identity is that we have the biggest wooden roller coaster. <laughs> My God, are we proud of that giant, stupid, wooden piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the Texas giant. Oh, man. At, at, a, at another Six Flags park, um, eight, eight teenagers got trapped in a walkthrough haunted uh, castle attraction. And the <laughs> and <laughs> this, this gets real dark real quick, Robert. Um, and oh, good. Um, all of the lights went out, like 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 the light bulbs went out, making the area pitch black. And so one of the kids u- yeah. used a small lighter to see, which then caught some foam oh. padding on fire. And there was oh, no awesome. there was no indoor sprinklers, and the whole thing burned down with those eight kids inside. Oh my god, that's a nightmare. So that uh. I, I think I think that is the uh, highest death toll from a single incident at any amusement park. Um, is, is 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 that incident? Um, which again, it's not like, it's not just Six Flags' fault, but like, they should have had sprinklers inside or something, right? If it's like an indoor thing. No, they thing. absolutely should have had sprinklers. Like, yeah, it's part of your job if you run a facility like that is to assume, to try and figure out ways in which dumb kids, because your entire clientele is dumb kids, yeah. will attempt to do things that could hurt themselves and then mitigate that. And you can't, you can't expect everything. Like in the case of like kids crawling under the thing and getting hit by feet, like, yeah, you know, you can after the fact try to deal with it, but like it's just a horrible thing that happened. But in the case of like, well, yeah, you should have fucking sprinklers in buildings filled with flammable materials. Like you should just always have that for the workers too. Like, yeah, that's that's that's, 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 that's absolutely. Like, there's been very that's not on the fucking. There's kids. been very few like deaths at Disneyland. Like like besides like, there's, there's actually there's been like a number of suicides, but like there's, well there's that been, we know of. Um, but it's a swamp. You can hide corpses in a swamp. Yeah, like but but nothing. like the, the, in terms of like like park guests, there hasn't been there many deaths. What there has been there has been a lot of worker deaths. Um and like um like uh, deaths like related to like construction and stuff. Uh because they don't really care about you know their workers and who's building all of the things. Um but like in terms of like the actual amusement park when it's operating, you know. Deaths and injuries are often like a combination of um, negligence on behalf of the park, user error, and sometimes pre-existing medical conditions that maybe you shouldn't be doing super like extreme high intensity stuff. Yeah. Um, well, however, there, there was one again to a certain point. Well, there, 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 there was there was one amusement park whose inherent danger 
wasn't simply ne- negligence or user error. Um, it was designed into every oh, single yeah. aspect of the park uh, itself. Uh, and that's yes. going to be today's, t- today's bastard. It's, Come on, baby. It's a, 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 on, a little baby. place about 45 uh, miles outside of New York City in the small town of Vernon, New Jersey, called Action oh, Park. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, Hell yes. yes. Oh, so I, man. I, 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 I first learned about Action Park a few years ago and was immediately immediately fell in love with this concept um it is mm-hmm. uh, it, 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 it it goes by a few other names uh, uh most popularly uh, class action park um uh, traction park friction park accident oh, yeah. park um i know we, we we've actually talked about action park a few times previously just because it's 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 yeah because it's just one of the funniest things ever like it's 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 uh, you know what it is garrison it's the kind of libertarianism that I respect. Yes, exactly. The, so that's kind of what I'm going to yeah. be talking about today. <laughs> because, like, I'm going to be honest here. I mm-hmm. think Action Park rules. I think it's, like, the perfect place for a teenager yeah, no, it's with great. my like, predispositions. It was absolutely, like, it, it has done innumerable harm to the world and to, and, to, and to a number of families and altered and ended people's lives. But it's pretty funny. Yeah, like, so like I'm, 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 it's, I, it's I, I am funny. gonna try to recognize how like there's, there's, you know, the, the very aspects of the park that make it charming to me also led to thousands of serious injuries and a number of preventable deaths. But you know, it there could have been more deaths actually. Like it is actually surprising how once we once we finish this episode, it'll be surprising how few deaths there are based on how ridiculous things get. Um, we're gonna be start by discussing the park's founder, uh, Gene Mulvihill. Because uh, Action Park really is, is just a, the direct spawn of this man. Um, similar to how like Disneyland and D- Disney World is, is like is like man. an extension of Walt Disney, and it's like a test ground for how Walt would like society to operate. Action Park is both an extension of Gene and like a playground for his ideal like weird Ayn Randian circus world. Um, he is uh, th- th- there's a there was a. Fi- <laughs> I think all of these kind of parks that are built by like a dude have that to them. Like there's another one in Texas called Schlitterbahn, which was also just like a dude who had no business and no experience designing water slides, just making a bunch of giant water slides. And yeah, people died. Um, but it was also a pretty rad place to get drunk and roll down a, a lazy river. You sure. Get fucking hammered at Schlitterbahn. And it was clearly this man's dream to just design different water attractions, having never studied or, or gotten any sort of relevant training in how to do that, um, and then give people cheap liquor in order to ride them. Well, and that's exactly I, what happens here, too. <laughs> yeah, I, I, love, I love that thing. I love that kind of thing. It's always fun when that specific thing happens. Um, there's a, a, yeah. a financial journalist named uh, Mary Pilton who described Gene as a mix of P.T. Barnum and Donald Trump, which is like like 80s Donald Trump. But I think is like a really good explanation of the bizarre man that this is. Yeah. Um, so um, Eugene, a.k.a. Gene uh, Mulville, was born in 1934. He grew up in a working class neighborhood in West Orange, New Jersey. Um, he, graduate, he, he graduated from uh, Leahy University with a Bachelor's of Science um, in 1956, which he then basically never used again. Um, uh, but he, he also got a focus in business of administration when he was in university. Uh, after this, he served in the Marine Corps um, in, and, uh, yeah, in, in, two, in two different battalions or divisions, and he earned the rank of captain. Um, According to his obituary, so spoilers, he's dead. Um, quote, Mr. Volville was a pioneer in the mutual fund industry and a venture capitalist and financier with a distinguished career, career spanning many industries, including cellular, cellular broadcast, cancer drugs, robotics, magnetic imaging technology, amusement park rides, ranching and real estate development. Um, by, by, by all accounts, Gene started out with not much money to his name when he began on Wall Street, and he was uh, evidently good at picking stocks. And a decent a decent portion of his fortune was made through Wall Street investments in the sixties and seventies, uh, and soon he actually founded. A- yeah, and when you when you have that skill, when you're able to make money that way, one of the things that says about you is that you are capable of completely cutting human beings out of out of the equation Abs- and like abso- human suffering. Absolutely, and that like it's a necessary thing to make a fortune as a stock trader, um, and also leads to really fun 
water parks. So. It does lead to very fun yeah. water parks. Yeah. Um, so <laughs> I'm on board so, so far. So, so eventually he, he founded his own Wall Street a firm called Mayflower Securities. Um, and then he went to co-found um, and develop a few medical research companies, which specialized in developing cancer vaccines. Now, spoilers, that, that did not uh, work out because we do not have vaccines for cancer. Um, oh, that's a shame. I, I got excited there for a second. In, instead, we got water parks. This is what's again. Well, you know. <laughs> <laughs> so in, in, in the early to mid 70s, Gene got started getting into the uh, the penny stock schemes, uh, also called the uh, pump a dump frauds. Um, within the yeah, it's Stock Bitcoin, exchange. but with a worse name. Bitcoin with a worse name, and on yeah, Wall or Street, crypto with a worse name. Yeah, and and yeah, on all Wall thinks... Street. So it's a little. I don't yeah. know, they're both very insufferable in their own way. Um, yeah. At least one you can buy drugs with. I guess actually he probably you could also buy drugs at Wall. Street. Never mind. Yeah. Yeah, both, you can have both of those. <laughs> both of those you get drugs from. <laughs> um, so it, it, it's basically when a salesman would sell a worthless shares to an unknowing cl- client for uh, a lot of a lot of money. Um, now, Mulville was a very outstanding and charismatic character on Wall Street, and, uh, and he, he, uh, he applied this whole plan um, um, with, his, with, his, uh, with, with a pal named Robert Brennan, who helped him start Mayflower Securities. Um, Robert Brennan was another noted kind of Wall Street fraudster at the time, and an all-around pretty sketchy dude. Um, he's he's, he's going to come back a, a few times in this story. But in 1973... Uh, Mayflower Securities was suspended by the Securities and Trades Commission on the grounds of selling its customers worthless securities in a bankrupt electronics company, according to a, a 1974 issue of the New York Times. So um, Brennan continued to make other penny, penny, other penny stock firms on Wall Street, uh, but for Eugene Mulville, he was basically kicked off of Wall Street, and he was he was not able to operate there anymore. No one wanted to do anything with him because he was frauding people for a long time. Um, but he yeah, I mean, that's just when you retire, right? Like, that's how every good Wall Street guy's career ends is they get caught committing what for anyone else would be the rest of their life in prison crimes. Uh, and instead, it's just like, well, you have to at least temporarily stop being stop working for Wall Street. And then they go on to become, I don't know, a senator. Well, he doesn't become a senator, but he has, he has another no. idea. <laughs> Yeah, he has so, a better idea. So he still has a decent amount of financial assets. Um, and what he decides to do is buy two ski resorts in Vernon, New Jersey. Um, so back in 1972, one of his Wall Street investments, uh, Vernon Valley and Great Gorge Ski Resort, went bankrupt. So Gene and uh, Bob Brennan formed a company called Great American Recreation and purchased both, of those, yeah. both of those ski resorts and combined them into one. Um, so... The and, and the, the vacation resorts were popular in the winter times. You know, you'd have people from New York come down and do skiing and stuff. But they wanted a way to crank out income during the summer. And it was in 1976 sure. when they arrived on the winning idea to build an outdoor summer adventure park, which would soon grow into Action Park in 1978. So this is kind of this is how we get from Wall Street investor guy to this guy who buys two ski resorts on a mountain and wants to transform it into basically the first water park in in the country because that action park was like was like one of the the original um, yeah, um yeah like a U.S. based like what we call water <laughs> parks now. No one had thought of the brilliant idea of mixing the fun of a playground slide <laughs> with the sheer erotic joy of being surrounded by other people's bodily fluids mixed in with poorly chlorinated water. <laughs> there wasn't much chlorinated water at Action Park. <laughs> it was- Thank God. Uh-huh. Uh, uh, so You love to see it. So Gene wanted Action Park to be different from other... Kind- like thrill-based amusement parks where you just like hop on a roller coaster. Um, he wanted, uh, ac- he wanted as, as the action park TV ads used to say, for you to control the action. That was, that, that was, that was the line they used. Um, mm-hmm. uh, Gene's son, Andy Mulville, explained his dad's thought process like this, quote, Gene didn't, Gene didn't want to do the same old shit where you get strapped in or something and it twirls around. He wanted, you, he wanted to take the idea of skiing, which is exhilarating because you control the action, and transfer it into an amusement park. There's an inherent risk to that, but that's what makes it fun. So it's like, here we want to like yeah, make I mean, the fun I've of skiing and do Yeah, I mean, I've seen similar ads for like very high-powered vibrators, and they have <laughs> a similar death toll to Action Park. Cool. There's a danger in controlling the action. 
<laughs> um, his his fr- ones you have to put into a twenty volt plug, like the ones that you run an arc Jesus welder off Christ. of, yeah, like that. Those kind of vibrators. <laughs> <laughs> uh, his uh, the, the the first the first addition he made to the ski resort to make it you know this summer adventure it, summer adventure park. Um, was in 1976 and it was called the Alpine Slide. It was a uh, it was almost a, a 3,000 foot long track going down a, a just a mountain. It's it's just like a big a big track going down a mountain. Um, it was you know it was a part of yeah. it's the mountains part of the uh, the Appalachians. Um, you you wrote, you you rode on this small cart controlled by a steering rod and you had a brake that sometimes worked. Um, more on the Alpine slide later. But uh, pretty soon, um, two water slides, a car racing track, and a skate park were added. And over the next few years, we had more water slides, a swimming pool, uh, you had, like tennis courts, a softball field. And at the beginning of the 1980s, uh, the, the softball field was replaced with a gigantic wave pool. This, this was one of the first wave pools in the country as well. Um, and we'll talk about this wave pool a little bit later. <laughs> I'll bet it was very secure. Uh huh. It was very safe and well well designed. Um, eventually, they got a whole nother racetrack, uh, more ridiculous slides, a kayaking ride, a few bungee jumping sets, which are oddly enough like one of the safest rides at Action Park was the bungee jumping ones, um, and you know various other like action based attractions. Um, in 1979, the summer section of the resort was renamed Action Park. And uh, altogether, the park ultimately had about 75 rides, 40 of them being water slides. And Action Park is still considered one of the first modern water parks in the States. So the, the, the thing is, is that, like, Gene didn't, Gene didn't know anything about amusement parks. Gene didn't, like, the amusement park entry was still, was, was still pretty new, but there was, there was already, like, experts in it who, like, specialized in stuff. Gene did not. Um... He was not an engineer. He didn't really know engineers. Um, and random people just approached Gene for ideas for rides. No one had engineer. Yeah. No one had engineering degrees. Um, See, that's perfect because it's a pure meritocracy. Then, uh-huh. You know, you don't have any kind of false divisions like having a degree, knowing how to make things safe, <laughs> understanding the basics of physics. None of that gets in the way of making a truly great ride. Pure meritocracy. I love it, like, Garrison. I love Gene it. would go to like amusement park conventions, and there'd be like ride designers who are blacklisted from Disney and Six Flags who would like talk to Gene because Gene's like the weird dude that he, that you could get to build your crazy ride. <laughs> but like, yeah, no one, no one was qualified. Um, however, uh, and, and and Gene, Gene basically greenlit every single ride that 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 came to him. Hell yeah. Um, but he will also do a lot of tinkering with the designs uh, to make them like more extreme, to push them a little bit further. So like again, pure meritocracy. Uh-huh. It's like every, it's like the ride was already not great to begin with, but then Gene would change it all of the time and just like make things just a little bit worse, or just like turn it up a little bit. Um, and he actually designed, or like designed, quote unquote. He he drew a lot of these on napkins. Um, most of the rides at Action Park <laughs> was he was the one that came up with the idea for, and he like made you know rough diagrams. Um, then he, he he you know just hired contractors and welders to build them. Uh, they were you know they were made out of like concrete, um, cement, uh, fiberglass, and PVC piping. That's what most of the rides were made out of. Um, it just it's just gluing gluing PVC pipes together and calling it good enough. That's basically how he set up his park. Um, and a uh, uh, gene. Uh, yeah, I mean, it's one of those things. Like you can spend a lot of time making sure it can like cover the uh, hold the weight of a human body, or that people can travel down it without lacerating themselves or cracking bones. But you're probably good at just eyeballing it, you know? Like, yeah. why, why, why go further? I mean, why go further? To be fair, the rides did always have a testing phase. He would pay his teenage yeah. he would pay his t- t- teenage employees money to test the rides, and many of them many of them did not get past the testing phase. Um, so yeah, he, I'm, I'm guessing <laughs> testing for Gene was not wildly different from how the SS tested vaccines on children and with a high body count. Yeah, that's basically what happened. Um, so, like, the final product was was a, a a truly a mix of Ayn Rand and Lord of the Flies, which sounds amazing. Like this is like the perfect place to be as a teenager. Like this is this the best oh, yeah. best combination this sounds of like everything. A dream. <laughs> There's no rules in the park, no no regulations from the government. Um, we'll get into those legal issues later. Um, Action Park was it was really only possible in a specific time in like 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 um Reagan's America. Like it's very very obvious that like you know this was like a, a, a zeitgeist moment. Um, 
And Gene was actually friends because because of Wall Street, Gene was friends with future president Donald Trump. Um, and according to parking employees, Trump was very close to investing in Action Park and actually dropped by one time to take a look. Um, upon seeing the park, he decided it was too unhinged uh, to invest in. <laughs> <laughs> Uh yeah. Captain COVID took one look at Jesus Park and was like, this is gonna get people killed. <laughs> yeah. So the park was too wild for uh, Donald Trump oh, to yeah. invest in. God. Um and that's kind of that gives you a really good idea of what the whole what the whole vibe is here. <laughs> um the, the, there are two other aspects which that made Action Park the legend that it is today. Um alcohol and the exclusively local teenage staff. Um, these are the, so these two things combined with the rides are what made Action Park the kind of, the, the legend that it exists as now. Um, journalist, um, Seth, uh, Porges, who's done most of the work digging into the history of the park, describes the park's atmosphere like this, quote, a lawless land that was ruled by drunk teenage employees, frequented by even drunker teenage guests filled with rides, uh, seemed to, that seemed to defy even the most basic notions of physics and common sense. And that is like the, that's the, that's the whole idea is that you're in this place that just ignores the laws of physics, ignores the laws of the country, full with drunk teenagers who are both running the park and attending the park. And that's it. And that's like that's how you just get the result that we got. Um, also, they were totally ignoring all all labor laws. Um, you know, it, Jersey law requires ride operators to be 16 years old. Uh, 14 year olds would would uh, would frequently be operating these rides. Um, yeah, I mean, their little hands can get in and and, and fix things better. I, I would guess. And all of the supervisors were kids, like like starting at like 16 years old, sure. because because if you were 16 years old, that means you were already working at the park for two years because you started working there when you were 14. So like yeah, you get experience, you get bumped up real quickly. One, one, <laughs> you've seen a lot of death at that point, and you can handle it. <laughs> one one seventeen year old uh, was a security guard for three months, and then he got bumped up to supervisor. <laughs> Mm-hmm. So that kind of shows how fast that uh, that progression goes in some cases. A previous manager has talked about how the teenage staff would like haze new employees by quote unquote drowning them in the pool by strapping them to a board and then floating them upside down and leaving them in the pool. Um, and he ends the story by seeing uh, things happen at Action Park that we don't talk about. So that's fun. Um, I, I don't think anyone died <laughs> by getting hazed, but, you know, it's, it's kind of unclear. Do you know who won't kill you by hazing, Robert? Uh, I mean, basically, uh, any of our podcast sponsors will happily kill you for a variety of reasons. They're, they're uh, not going to. They're not going to duct tape you to a piece of wood and float you upside down in the swimming pool as a bit. Hello, fresh mite. Um, <laughs> the, look, they might. Okay, I'm not going to say that they won't. Um, because. Yeah, we've all lost a lot of friends to HelloFresh. Look, that's all that's all I'm going to say about it. Uh, anyway, I hope their ads aren't on this. Ah, uh, we are back. And my God, I, for one, enjoyed it when HelloFresh threatened to hold our heads down under a wave pool unless we ordered their fettuccine Alfredo dinner for two. Um, hello, fresh. They'll fucking kill you. <laughs> <laughs> I honestly don't think we've ever even had Hello Fresh as a sponsor. We had one of those food box companies sponsor us briefly. I think it was. I think it was Blue Apron. It might have been Blue Apron. I don't think our fans are really food box people. Whew, this is hurting me and again, making it harder for ad ops to sell us food <laughs> yeah, boxes. What? Can we not? Can we not like p- pigeonhole ourselves here? I don't know. Uh, Dick pills and sheets are all I want to sell. Hey, hey, guess what? what? You're not leading this episode. Garrison, continue. All right, scrutiny. Garrison. This, this is going to be, I, th- I think we're already going to my favorite quote um, that I have, that I've pulled for this show. This is, this is from Weird New Jersey Magazine, which is a great resource just in general. Is um, there a normal New Jersey magazine? I don't know. Because- but this magazine was like staffed by a whole bunch of people who grew up to be like famous comedians. Um, oh, okay. So it's actually a pretty a pretty cool site in Meg. Um, anyway, but here 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 is a quote about Action Park that really sums up th- the beauty of this place and why I want to live there. Um, 
Quote, it was truly a teen-run show, and it manifested itself in uh, many ways, from ride attendants willfully ripping the entrance wristbands from park attendees who misbehaved, to staff knowing all the places that one could get stoned and or drunk, to hide from supervisors, and Action Park got into legal tr- trouble for letting underage employees run rides too. So chances are your personal safety may have once been in the hands of a 14-year-old tripping on acid. Which is the best, the best scenario, that there was 14-year-old operators of these rides just tripping on acid as they're oh yeah, yeah like I mean, leading you through this water slide <laughs> i have a i have a relative that's as detailed as i should get who very nearly died because he went to six flags with his friends and they all took a tremendous amount of acid and it was like oh no degrees and <laughs> there was yeah. a heat stroke problem um so i can only imagine that if they had instead of just being at six flags been running uh-huh. six flags it would have been a much safer situation <laughs> oh uh, to make the whole like weird teenage atmosphere even better um at the top of the alpine slide on on the mountain there was uh there was an employees only shed that's referred to as the sex shack um or the weed shack um basically it's just tons of drunk high and horny teens all dating each other while running an amusement park there was there was a uh, massive action park employee parties um at, at the end of summer basically a, a big all night bash where everyone stayed over at the park People would get like blackout drunk and then wake up, go find your whistle and then go do quote unquote lifeguarding in the morning. Um, and that's just how the park was run. And Gene was like, OK with it. Cause he's like this weird, like libertarian dude. <laughs> he's like, yeah, do whatever. Yeah. <laughs> you can go have. Well, yeah, and you can't go have sex in the shed. Go, go have sex in the shed and then r- run the park. Yeah, that's that's I mean, how else how else are you going to like run an amusement park like this you can't hire adults you can't hire real no people, no right? adults wanted because to work there people are going to complain about how it's a death trap uh-huh. the children only care that they're getting beer money and are allowed to oh, take acid robert on the job. you so think they're the paying situation. for beer there was so much free <laughs> alcohol at action park <laughs> I, again this is how all of society should work <laughs> Oh, so like the 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 free form atmosphere was very inspired by Gene's libertarian ideals. Um, he he like uh, a few times like fake killed himself in front of employees as a joke. <laughs> what a fucking dude! <laughs> Just <laughs> pretending to commit suicide in front of his tripping employees. They still have blood on their hands from the last time somebody went down the slide the wrong way. <laughs> Uh, fucking A. <laughs> uh, I love to see the, the employees often refer to him as Uncle Gene. Um, and that sounds that's, like an uncle. That's the, he yeah. sounds like a specific he, kind of uncle. He kept he kept a Mac Ten machine gun in his office drawer. Good. Yeah. Classic choice. Yeah. Ingram is really. I mean, if you if you might need to hose down a bunch of like plain clothes feds trying to close down your water park oh that happened it's the Rob- 80s that happened robert <laughs> that-, <laughs> that happens a uh, few times in the story <laughs> what that he hosed feds down with no gun plain fire, clothes feds just came? Show, show up at yeah. his park to like to like collect money um anyway um what a hero he uh he got this fake cattle prod um, and hatched mm-hmm. an idea to stop people from riding the ski lift to the top of the slide without a ticket. You were supposed to have a ticket to ride on the ski lift. <laughs> so, uh, but like pe- 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 people just didn't care. They were just riding it. So he's like, oh, they should, they should be buying my tickets. So he, he, he got this plan. Um, an employee would pretend to be a park guest and he would, he, and he would, he would get on the lift quote unquote without getting it, without having a ticket. Uh, the operator would then ask for a ticket. And then when the incognito employee didn't have one, the park operator would pull out the fake cattle prod and tase him. So that it would scare kids into like not riding the thing without a ticket. And he did this. This is, this is a little skit that he, that he did. Um, and it resulted in hundreds of parents calling in to complain that their kids saw someone operating the ski lift, <laughs> kill someone, one for not having a ticket <laughs> see and i think the fact uh, honestly my only uh, opinion of this is that the fact that he wasn't really tasing people for writing this no lift yeah. without a ticket is incredible restraint on gene's yeah. part given the man that he is yes yes um 
So once enough rides were built, Gene went into marketing mode um, and started airing some amazing TV ads uh, made by his daughter, Julie, starring the park's teenage employees. Um, when, uh, when a local TV reporter filming a live segment on the 70-foot bungee jump um, called the Snapple Snap Up Whipper Snapper cool name. Um, So when when this reporter refused to jump off because he was scared, Gene's youngest son, Christopher, pushed the reporter off the ledge. Excellent. Uh, (laughs) He was so ready for the 21st century. It's a shame that he was born in the 30s and not like the 70s. 70s. He really could have gotten up to some shit these days. Uh. Uh, So yeah, um, on to, on to like how the park operated itself. Um, there were there were three sections of the park. On, on on the mountain, we had Water World and Alpine Center. These had like all the slides, water slides, and like outdoor adventure based attractions. And uh, on, on the uh, closer closer to the bottom of the mountain, uh, uh, there was a section called Motor World, which is like cart racing and like attractions that like required like motors to run essentially. Um, uh, dividing Water World and Alpine Center and, and Motor World was the Route 94 highway. So a highway went right through the middle of the park, actually, um, dividing the, the different sections up. Um, we will start uh, the deep dive uh, into the into the rides by discussing... Wait, wait, wait. So, so it's like if like there was a giant freeway in between California Adventures? Yes, California. exactly. And okay. this, this, this gets used creatively. Um, so... Well, I, 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 when you said, I'm like, there has to be a reason why Garrison is mentioning yeah. this, because... Yeah, there's just there 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 is safe. it's 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 not a great idea. Um, it's convenient sure. for like if you're running an amusement park, be like, yeah, you can just pull off off the highway in two two sure. directions near both an yeah, amusement park. Yeah, all of the best places I've um, gone go kart riding have been right off of the highway. Yeah, and the yeah, best yeah, yeah. like the danger of that is because I when I go to play go, to when I go go kart riding, I go to hurt people. Right, <laughs> like my goal is to make sure that if there are kids <laughs> on the track, they don't graduate high you school. You would have loved you know? Action like, Park, Robert. Oh boy, <laughs> that's the reason to do go karts. Robert, you don't want, say this on and the mic. The problem is when you get done go kart riding and you get right back on the highway, you have to really be careful to. Like the de, like the, de-escalate the yourself. thing is, Robert, because if you've just been like permanently injuring like fourteen you, you year olds, just the thing is, Robert, record threatened to end high school. Here, tr- not end their lives, in their ability to graduate high school. Here's here's the thing. God damn it! Here's Robert, the thing. What the fuck? You you could get drunk at a authentic German pub <laughs> right next to the go-karts and then take the go-karts onto the highway. Um, what a paradise. What a uh-huh. Shangri-La. Uh-huh. Xanadu was what real. What a Shangri-La <laughs> ending high schoolers so, high school so here, here, cool. here's, cool. here Here's a list of the Motor World rides uh, courtesy of themeparktourist.com, the, the, the premier source of info for uh, amusement park rides. Um we had uh, the bumper boats, which is like bumper cars but boats. Um, the, the engines of oh, the, fucking a. The, the engines of these frequently leaked gasoline. There was at least one instance where a guest needed, needed <laughs> medical attention because too much of it went, got onto his skin. Also, the pond that they were in was filled with giant snakes. Um, <laughs> of course it was. Why not? Because why wouldn't you want snakes in the bumper pool? <laughs> I bet, I bet old Gene went and got the snakes and put them in himself. <laughs> People aren't going to think it's authentic if there aren't snakes. <laughs> um, uh, incredible. What a hero. <laughs> we, next to the bumper boats, we had the Lola cars. These were miniature race cars with an open cockpit on a long track. It cost, it cost extra money to drive the cars, but people were willing to pay, especially the people who knew that you could raise the speed to dangerous levels without the right adjustment. You could stick your <laughs> hand in the engine and, like, move a piece of metal that would make the speed governor, uh, like, operate uh, wrong, and you could get up to, like, 70 miles an hour on these. Um... So the park had actually <laughs> Jesus Christ. So, well, and the best thing is the only way people found that out. You don't figure that out just if you're writing it a lot. You figure that yeah, out if exactly. You work there. Yes, and then that's, you tell your friends is, who go to the park and that, they spread that it is to exactly everyone what else. Like that's um, yeah. yeah. This, this, start, this started with park employees, and it slowly spread to like you know the teenage uh, like you know underground gossip thing. Um, so, so something else Gene did, which one of his smarter decisions is that. So, like, there is tons of alcohol everywhere at Action Park. Like, there's, like, alcohol stands so many places. They do not care what age you are. They don't care anything. But one thing he did as well is 
he dismantled a microbrewery pub in Germany and moved it to Action Park. So fr- from Germany, he moved the entire pub and he set it up right next to the race cars. <laughs> what a perfect human. <laughs> so oh, af- man. after the park was closed, employees were known to break into the microbrewery, steal tons well, of sure. steel beer, and then take the, take the race cars onto the highway. Um, yeah, of course. <laughs> uh, so next to the... Uh, and all of this, Gene knew all of this would happen. Oh, he, he knew it was happening. He wanted to happen. Yeah, he's like, yeah, it's yeah. fun. Why not? <laughs> no, he wanted, he wanted to pill those kids on libertarianism. <laughs> You don't need fucking driver's licenses. I don't care what age you are. <laughs> and if you can grab the alcohol, you can drink it. <laughs> oh. oh. Um there was um there was a, there was like a slingshot, a bungee jumping ride where two people were shot up in the air um and we went upside down. These these are pretty common in amusement parks nowadays. Um usually usually they cost more money cuz of like insurance issues, but uh Action Park had its own insurance setup, which we'll talk about later, so he didn't need to do that. Um, then we have a super super go karts, which is different from the race cars. Um, basically, people people be- because the race cars went so much faster. I mean, like I say this, but like the, the super go karts could also go fifty miles an hour by messing with the, by messing with the speed governor. They would like shove they would sho- shove, shove a tennis ball in the engine, uh, so you would like move the governor stick. So like these. These go karts still go fifty miles an hour, and they were often used as bumper cars. Um, so, uh, g- g- gasoline uh, fuel leaks were another were, not, were an, 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 another problem um, for 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 the go kart track. Um, there is a quote from an Action Park guest. Um, the quote: "I still remember being able to. Be, I still remember being able to be served Action Park beer at age seventeen, and then go riding the go karts." If you knew how, with, and without burning yourself in the muffler, <laughs> you'd reach behind it and pull the throttle past where the governor was set and just take off past the other kids. Amazing. <laughs> wow. Uh, um, they, there was another boating attraction called the Super Speed Boats, uh, which was a, a small pond, uh, which also had snakes. Um, no. And, and, and yeah, people, people would often fall out of the speed boats. So this was more of a problem sure. with the snakes. Um, and also riders would, uh, would, would, would also use the speed boats as bumper boats, which is a problem because uh, these are yeah. going like, super fast. Um, oh, my God. There was uh, the one really drunk individual needed to be rescued by a life card after, uh, because of his boat fully capsized. Um, but but people, people fell out you know, often. Um, I would, I'm not surprised. There I was, would be almost disappointed if they didn't. There was a guy that... Uh, so there, uh, there was a speedboat uh, parked like in the dock, and another guy who was racing uh, was going super fast, and he jumped his boat on top of the other docked boat while someone was still inside, and they very nearly got decapitated. <laughs> Um, the, the, the guy that, the guy that jumped a boat then ran off and people never found him or he, he never faced any punishment because he was able to run fast enough, which is, yeah, that's kind of how you do it. Um, if you do something wrong, if you run quickly, then it's fine. So that was, that was the speed boats. And one of, one of the best, uh, rides in the motor world, maybe, 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 maybe my favorite is the tank ride. Um, this ride featured heavily in the TV ads back in the day. Uh, basically, can can we have Robert guess what that means? The the, the tank, tank ride. ride. Yeah, I mean, I'm guessing like the weapon system, right? Like some child version of a tank. Pre- pretty much. Um, okay. So like Gene built these motorized tanks, and they had this whole like arena. And for excellent. Oh man, I'm on board so for far. A, a small feat. He would let guests drive. Um, in these tanks for five minutes at a time, shooting tennis balls from from cannons at the other uh, tanks. Uh, don't, don't worry, don't worry, Robert. It gets it gets better. Um, okay. When hit, a tank would automatically stop for like fifteen seconds, uh, giving the other tankers and visitors with and also uh, on on the edges of the arena also had cannons that people could just walk up to and shoot. Um, and uh, so yeah, you could you could just shoot tons of tons of tennis balls. Um, now often these tanks would break down, and workers would have to go inside of the arena to 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 fix the tank. But they didn't shut down the rocket. <laughs> so <laughs> so it was like the guy at a golf course whose job is to clean the driving range. Did you yeah. aim for the fucker? So um, everyone would try to hit the employees uh, with the with the tennis balls. Just, of course, um, th- of course this, you would. This made the tank ride an unpopular work shift. Um, <laughs> yeah, oh, uh, no, really. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there was one time where a park attendee um, acqui- uh, f- acquired gasoline from inside the park, 
and soaked his tennis balls inside them, brought, brought them into the tank, and then lit them on fire, and started shooting flaming fireballs out of his tank. <laughs> Um, they were they were kicked out of the park. Unfortunately, incredible. Unfortunately, no, you see, they were that should make you manager of the park. This is where see libertarians are never as consistent no, as they should. They're not be. exactly. No, you should reward that kind of innovation. <laughs> Shooting flaming tennis balls Gee, at employees. Come on, <laughs> that's that's amazing. <laughs> Uh, come on if you get hit by one just dive into the gasoline pool you'll be all right <laughs> hey worst case scenario you burn the snakes, burn the snakes out. out solve two problems <laughs> oh man so the last time i played bumper guards it was this place in la that was again right next to a highway and i was just i was going out of my way to hit kids as i usually do when i'm playing up bumper cars Robert, and I managed, what the fuck? I managed to turn around, so I was going the opposite direction and just driving head on at people. And it was like, it was like me, a group of adults who were horrified, and these little kids. And I would just keep riding around and slamming in the walls and just screaming "death" like the Rohirrim the whole time. Uh, it was such a good day. Oh, that does. God, I love bumper cars. That does sound real fun. We should we should go to Oaks Park sometime. No, I can't go back to go, to do more bumper cars. It makes me a bad person. He can't person. go back. Right. He cannot go back. He's not allowed. It makes me a really He's bad person. I can't not. I, I just can't not. The, the only place I can do bumper cars safely is Mexico, because everyone there, everyone at Mexican bumper cars is on as much acid and as violent as I am, or at least I that's how I were, remember. I thought you were going to say on the 405 in Los Angeles, because that's basically what it is. No, for every, 405, it's very polite driving. Very, very. That's why you need the bumper cars. You need to go hurt people on the bumper cars. <laughs> you need to do damage to your friends. Oh, uh, I miss bumper cars. All right, so you can't do we have, it. We, yeah. we have we have gotten most of the notable Moto World rides, so we're gonna move up to Alpine Center. Uh, this housed all like the sports related attractions and, and like all like the sports ball fields. Um, and then, you know, tons of like other slides. It did have a, another bungee jumping attraction that was 70 feet tall, um, which is one of the safer rides in the entire park. And uh, Action Park was also briefly home to a skate park, obviously uh, now not designed by an engineer or people who knew anything about skateboarding. So the bulls that riders skated in were separated by like um, uh, black pavement and, did it, and there was no smooth edges. So a lot of tumbles. Um, an, an Action Park employee uh, talked about the skate park. Um, and he said, uh, uh, quote, so then they built a skate park, a masterpiece in design where the smooth bowls were uh, isolated by the black pavement between them. Who thought this was a good idea? The black top did not even meet the cement at a smooth <laughs> edge. The skate park was responsible for many for so many injuries that we covered up that we covered it up with dirt and pretended it never existed. Amazing. Ah, uh, that's libertarian. Gene's back in my good books. That's how you do so it. So we covered up with dirt, never, never existed, and thought of grander ways to hurt people, like the Honda Odysseys. Now, before... <laughs> 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 you don't even need to finish that. I'm just hoping he invented the Honda Odyssey and that was his final way, method of revenge on the race. He didn't, didn't invent the Honda Odyssey, but before the minivan of the same name, Honda made a four-wheeled, uh, a, 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 a knobby-tired go-kart, which, uh, like, predated ATVs. And that was wicked fun, mostly for the employees who would ride them through the park, terrorizing everyone in our path. That's quoting former park employee Tom Fergus. So just chasing around park guests on ATVs and all the sidewalks <laughs> after you bury the skate park because it hurt too many kids. Um, do, do you know, do, Robert, are you familiar with the people who don't drive ATVs at children at skate um, parks? Why would you not? aim an ATV. So an ATV garrison, I come from the South. Oh, so I've, there's two purposes. I grew up in the prairies. I grew up in the prairies of Canada. Yeah. We, we had, we, yeah, I know. Yeah. You, you and I have had this conversation yes. with friends who are not ATV pill. There's two purposes for an ATV. One is to kill large chunks of family, of your own family, uh, yeah. of your own family and terrible ATV accidents. Uh, and the other is to use as a weapon against people who irritate you. Yeah. And those are the jobs of an ATV. Um, so yes, I, I can't imagine anyone not driving it at someone. I, I, I hope we, or, do, I hope we do get a sponsorship from big ATV soon, uh, because I would love if they that. could send us free ATVs, we could have so much they fun. They could, and we could, <laughs> they could, we could get, we could wipe out whole generations <laughs> in a single weekend away from home. <laughs> so here, here's some ads from hopefully big ATV. Sophie, get on that. Can we, can we get an ATV sponsorship? Mm -hmm. Please, please. 
I'll put that request in for you. Here's the ads. We're back. Oh, Sophie, do you think all this talk about injuring people, specifically children, is going to go badly with our audience? With our audience? No. Oh, good. With okay. Our, We're with, good. With our employment? Probably. Well, look, he, you can't, you here's can't the win thing. them all, Sophie. I know. I look don't know. The, there's certain, so there's some people who grow up and fun is doing things that are enjoyable for everyone involved. And there's some people who grow up and fun is um, damaging each other. Um, sure. And, I grew up in 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 the country a decent chunk of my childhood. And so fun often involved someone getting horribly injured. And, you know, that was that that's just life. That's just life. And eventually you seek to replicate that fun by having, I don't know, fireworks fights and uh, trying to go bicycle jousting and beating your friends with raw fish in public parks, um, you know. Just good times. Great times. Great times. I, we, All right. We, we could have had some fun times at Action Park. We could have had some fun I, I would times have, at Action Park. I would have traveled to the state of New Jersey just oh, I would have, to I would go have to Action rented, Park. I would have rented a house for a month. <laughs> oh, man. So uh, in, in the, the Alpine Center has a lot of rides that never got through testing. Um, possibly maybe my favorite attraction in the entire park which uh did not last super long was called the man in the ball in the ball um it was a giant metal ball floating inside an even bigger metal ball uh with t- with tiny wheels all around it and you would ha- you'd have someone in, in in the very middle um the idea was to roll down a mountain in a ball on a set track. Now, this the track was made of, out of PVC piping. Um because no one knew what they were doing. Um, on and on human testing day, it was it was very hot, and PVC piping like is plastic, so like it expands. So as they were rolling the ball with a person inside down the mountain, the track completely fell apart, um, and the ball rolled rolled down the mountain over the highway and into the swamp with the snakes with someone all Excellent. inside. Um, Excellent. It did not pass human testing, unfortunately. Ah. Uh. Yeah. That's that's a shame. Yeah, I know. Well, you can't get everything. I know. Um, a, another ride that did not last long was the so-called zero gravity slide, which was allegedly inspired by airplanes. Now, <laughs> no one, okay. So, no one knows how. Love that allegedly doing a lot of heavy lifting there. No, so no one knows what gravity or airplanes are. Who's involved with this ride? Um, you was. The the goal was you would have a slide that you gain enough speed and then hit a ramp that makes you glide through the air. Now, that's not how humans work. <laughs> no, that's not how physics. But, but this guy doesn't know any of that. This man's never studied anything in his life. <laughs> so the idea was like glide through the air and then land perfectly parallel back on the slide to go on another ramp. Um, <laughs> like this guy's whole plan for building a ride is to drive to a Home Depot parking lot say Trabajo and hold out a napkin. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> so, And it's a testament to the workers he hired, to the day laborers he hired, that fewer people died than you than I know. died That's if the he surprising. entirely had his Once way. we're done the episode, you're like, how did only X amount of people die? Like, yeah, it should have been yeah. more. I mean, there, there, there maybe is some more that we just don't know about, but like, it's, it's weird how few there are. It's like, man, it is... Very absurd. Um, I don't know. As I've learned racing go-karts, it's harder to kill people than you might think. So testing on employees went surprisingly well with the zero gravity slide. But then uh, shortly after it opened, a small kid went on and got going super fast. And he launched so high that he missed the entire slide and the landing pad and was sent to the hospital and the ride got shut down. Um, So it it didn't last super long. Um, And probably one, one of the more infamous rides at Action Park is the Alpine Slide. It was the longest running like action park attraction, and it was the first one built. Um, this was it was a long a long shoot on the side of a mountain uh, that caused many many major perils and injuries. Um, it was I, I ironically referred to as the safest ride there uh, because <laughs> be, be, <laughs> because 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 park officials would talk to like the media and say like no it's safe we saw a ninety year old grandma carrying a baby right down the slide um, so that was yeah. the line they kept using um, 
Yeah, which is also very, very frightening to hear because the, the, these tracks were made out of uh, concrete, fiber, fiberglass, and uh, asbestos. Well, and also, I am absolutely certain, being the man that he was, if you'd called something the safest ride at his park, Gene would take it as an insult. Yeah, sure. Like, how, how dare you? <laughs> how dare you say that about my so, child? So, like, th- the windy, bumpy track was made out of uh, concrete, cement, fiberglass, and asbestos. So anyone who took, a, t- t- anyone who took like, a, even a minor hit t- tended to get, like, very bad, like, friction burns um, uh, on, on their skin because you're rubbing on all of these rough materials. Um, and also, like, they were usually just wearing bathing suits. Like, they, they didn't have much clothes on. Um, the this, this sled had uh, two speeds. Very slow because you're braking the whole time, or bullet fast, like insanely quick. <laughs> um, <laughs> and also, the alpines. In order to get to the top of the alpine slide, you need to get on the ski lift, which we already, we already talked about with like the fake tasing. Um, you know, the ski lift. It's, 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 same thing. Um, but on on the ski lift up, people would like play games. Uh, games such as like spitting on the people on the slide and trying to trying to hit them, um, or uh, to, when, when you're riding up the ski lift, you would like strap your sled onto the side. And what you would also do is try to drop your hard sled on people riding down the slide. <laughs> <laughs> See, it's a whole theme park where everybody thinks the way I do at theme parks. This was, uh, this was, I had a home at one point, Garrison. I had a home <laughs> and I never got to see it. This was a daily occurrence. People dropping their like twenty pounds. Literally, what else are you going to do? Twenty pounds sleds onto people riding down. So at the top of the slide, there was a gallery of bloody pictures of people who ra- rode the ride previously. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Um, and on your little slide, you had you had like a stick break, which almost never worked. Um, yeah, why? No, why would it, that's the least important thing in the entire park is the brakes on anything. <laughs> like you, why would you give you a single really fuck need about the brake to turn on the slides, or else you're just gonna fly you need off. The brake if you're a coward, Garrison. Your brakes are the other people on the ride. That's <laughs> that, how you that also, do any. That also happens. <laughs> yeah, that's how you make it work. You use their bodies as a brake. That happened. That did happen frequently. Um, but like, I'll bet. Even if you did brake properly, the bumps could still send you flying off into like a uh, rocky. It's like it's like the around. <laughs> the slide was like a mountain it wasn't like soft grassy it wasn't soft grassy hills it was a rocky mountain <laughs> yeah just a pile of rocks so i bet they were soft rocks it's the appalachians right that's so, not the hard mountains there, you know everything b- broken collarbones broken arms many concussions on an a- on an average day there was 50 to 100 people injured on the slide double double on the weekends <laughs> What an incredible place. <laughs> Near, but it's okay. You've got that brewery right there. You break uh-huh. your collarbone, you go get fucked, get, and you get right back on the horse that bit you. You could probably find acid from a from like from like a fourteen year old who's riding who's like operating the water slide. Yeah, I feel like you would have to work to not buy acid from a fourteen year old at Action Park. Like that would that would be that would be an achievement. You'd go back home. And was like, yeah, I went to Action Park and I did not buy drugs from a child. It's like going to Guatemala. <laughs> <laughs> near near the bottom of the alpine slide was a so-called infirmary shack specifically for slide related injuries um inside the shack there was a white there was a small white circle on the ground um and to help prevent infection after you know bad friction burns they had a special spray which was just alcohol and iodine um <laughs> that they would uh, that employees would spray onto the open wounds caused by the slide now if you could stay inside the circle as the employees sprayed you you would win a prize um, and if you, if you ever had a big like traction burn or anything, uh, if if you ever had one tr- tr- try to get cleaned, especially by any like alcohol based spray, you can imagine how extremely painful this would be. Like some of the worst pain you can imagine. Um, oh yeah. So w- one employee recounts o- over the three years they worked there, only two people ever stayed in the circle. And remember, there's like fifty to hundred people getting injured on week weekdays, double on weekends. Um, so only two people stayed in the circle over this employee's time working, and the prize was an action park pen. So that's, Oh boy. That's fun. Um, that's, that's, uh, y- worth it. Yeah. And, and here's where things get to start to get a little, uh, actually get darker. Uh, the Alpine slide was the first, uh, was the site of the first death at, at the park. Okay. 
Um, 19-year-old uh, George Larson Jr. was at Action Park with his family on July 8, 1980. Uh, he was riding the Alpine slide and got thrown off the track and his head struck a nearby rock. After several days in a coma, he died. Um, Gene Mulville tried to cover up the death by saying Larson was an Action Park employee and he snuck in at nighttime and it was raining when the accident happened. None of that is true. Um, but this meant that since Gene claimed he was an employee who died, he did not need to report the death to state regulators. So he just oh, wow. lied, so he didn't have to report it. That's <laughs> and very you still You still see this lie reported in a lot of media about Action Park. Um, you still see this lie repeated. Yeah, that an employee died? Yeah, that, that the first death was an employee who snuck in at night, uh, which just did not happen. Um, so the Alpine slide only caused one death that we know of. But it was responsible for most of the lawsuits and around 40% of the citations against Action Park. Um, yeah, it was also one of the last rides to get shut down when the park closed. Um, so on now that, that, that wraps up uh, uh, the Alpine Center. Now we're going to go on to Waterworld, the, the final area of the park. Um, and oddly enough, the first Waterworld attraction we're going to talk about has nothing to do with water. It's actually a skydiving simulator. Um, there was a skydiving simulator, like wind tunnel outdoors, that was invented in Germany in 1984. Um, it was uh, the first one was moved to the states in 1987 at, at Action Park. Riders wore special diving suits, helmets, and earplugs, and they had an instructor there who would like help you like get over this giant trampoline with a fan, essentially. Um, most injuries at, at, the, at the skydiving simulator came because riders would instinctively try to like break their falls by, extend, by extending their arms. I used to be a parkour instructor. That's pretty common when people fall and they, uh, and they don't know how to. They try to use their arms and you get a lot of, you know, d- um, like dislocated uh, shoulders, wrists. Yeah, you're supposed strikes. to tuck and roll, right? Yeah, or it's, like, or... it's just like throwing yourself out of a vehicle. Even like landing flat on your back is better than landing on your arm. Um, yeah. Uh, so yeah, this this there caused a lot of uh, shoulder. The, the ride caused a lot of shoulder dis- dislocation, um, severed nerves, and uh, it almost caused some uh, permanent arm paralysis in a few guests. Um, but now on to the the most famous, albeit short lived, action park attraction, the Cannonball Loop. This one was designed on a napkin. Um, okay. good, good. So so we're off to a so like, great. You start. know how there's roller coasters that do a little like loop de loop thing. You know, like the basic thing. Mm-hmm. It's fun. You know, you go a little loop de loop. Now, what is that but water slide? Now, if you're saying, but that's not how water works, because you can't like shoot water up the thing unless you have like a hose running through it, which he didn't have. That 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 does not yeah. matter, uh, because Gene drew a little loop de loop uh, on a napkin and then built this water slide. <laughs> um, in the initial testing, uh, he put down like crash test dummies, um, and the dummies came out with like missing limbs and heads. Um, and then when they moved on to human testing, uh, Gene offered employees $100 to ride the cannonball loop, uh, which was like, will you be my flesh mannequin? <laughs> it's like $300 in today's money. So uh, if you're yeah. if you're a teenager, no, you could, it's not nothing. You, you could buy like, I don't know, 20 tabs with that or something. It's great. It's a great deal. I mean, and just speaking from a libertarian point of view, there's no greater joy than handing children money to endanger their own lives. That's really, that's the peak of that ideology. So the, the, the cannonball loop oh, never caused super bad injuries, actually. It's surprising how much it functioned because it was just drawn on a napkin. Um, there were, like, yeah, because it looks like, look at a picture it, of it's, the it's cannonball like, It's like a Looney Tunes it looks, ride. Like, it, it's, it's out of its mind. <laughs> so, um... The, 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 there were like, you know, concussions and stuff, but like, you know, it's a concussion. It's bad, but you know, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not, it's not the worst. Um, and there were some very unhappy testicles from having to like loop up and then your body hits, you know, the side of the thing. Yeah. Don't feel great afterwards. But the ride was deemed safe enough by Gene. And, you know, the sheer just impossible nature of the construction was too enticing <laughs> to pass up. Um, yeah. No, you have to try it. Yeah. So right, right before you, uh, when the ride opened, right, right before you got on, they would have like a garden hose to spray you down to help make you more slippery. Um, and uh, they should have looped people up. They should have looped people up. up. Gotten those big fifty horse gallon lube. jugs of horse, horse lube. lube. <laughs> yeah. It sh- it sh- <laughs> Initially, there was no padding at the top of the slide. This caused a lot of injuries, uh, like smashing your head to the top of the loop. Um, but then some foam padding was added. The next issue is that ri- riders kept exiting the slide with bizarre cuts and scratches on their body. When the slide was inspected, they realized that human teeth were found stuck in the foam padding from people smashing their heads in the top. <laughs> 
incredible detail. Just other people's teeth are embedded so deeply in it that the teeth are biting <laughs> passengers after them. Oh, so, my God. The, the cannonball loop was... <laughs> Again, the only thing I would change if I were running Action Park was for everyone to be covered in lube at all times. It would have made the park a bit safer. That would have gotten rid of those deaths. Yeah. Yeah. So the, the the loop was only open for a little over a month in the summer of 1985 before the state's um, advisory board on carnival amusement safety or ordered its closure. Um, Too many teeth. You can't have this many teeth in a plane park ride. <laughs> Uh, Gotta get this number of teeth down by half. So, moving on to other kind of bizarre water slides, there was one called the Aqua Scoot, where uh, riders would have uh, hard plastic sleds at the top of the attraction and go down a uh, you know a, a curved a curved open slide, um, and and uh, but on the on the on the track they had little like metal rollers, you know, like you have like a, like a, like a factory as, as assembly line. So you would roll across these on the sled and then try to skip yourself like a stone over a puddle at the bottom. Um, so it was like it was like it's like you're stone skipping, but you're the stone. Um, it 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 didn't if, if you weren't positioned just right, you would immediately face plant, and the and the pool was not very deep. It was only like a foot deep, so you would like slam into the bottom of this of this of this little uh, puddle. Also, there was a bee's nest inside the slide. Um, <laughs> he just couldn't help himself. I have to believe that every interaction of wildlife with injured was intentional? people is purposeful. Was was Gene being like, uh, what else can I stick in here? Fucking bee's nest. What what one of the rides that looks actually super cool. Um, was called the Colorado River Ride. It was a group <laughs> inner tube ride that was a whitewater rafting simulator. Um, now, mm-hmm. it began life as a lazy river ride. And Gene was like, you know, you know what's more fun than a lazy river Not ride? action in the lazy river. <laughs> is whitewater, is class four rapids. Mm-hmm. So early, early, early human test pilots came out of this ride unconscious. Um, so the intensity was slightly turned down, but it was still very, it was still a very intense ride. Um, and Gene purposely removed all of the lifeguards there because quote, there are, there are no lifeguards at the Colorado river. (laughs) Well, there you go. There you go. (laughs) I mean, fair enough, my man. Fair enough. (laughs) Oh, oh. (laughs) incredible. Um, there aren't Gene. You are correct. (laughs) Uh, nearby were the diving cliffs. Um, uh, like uh, 25 and 15 feet tall uh, cliffs over a, a freshwater pool. It was a, the pool was about 16 feet deep. Because, um, like, the whole inspiration for Action Park was, like, Gene says it was, like, the nature that he grew up in. And he figured if kids couldn't go into real nature, his park could be the next best thing. So this just meant, you know, a Colorado River ride and jumping off cliffs. Um, mm-hmm. on, on, on the cliff jumping one, uh, you would often land on top of people because, you know, uh, the danger of the ride was that the section of the pool where, where people landed wasn't blocked off at all, and people would just jump off without caring about what's under them. So there's a lot of, like, collisions, and, you know, you're cl- colliding on people over top of a 16-foot pool, and people did not know how to swim. Um, no, of course Shoulders not. would get constantly dislocated, um, and the, the water was much deeper than expected. Eventually, uh, they had to paint uh, the bottom of the pool white so it was easier to see bodies. Uh, sure. Because it's just hard to tell with, you know. You know you're running a good theme park when the sentence, so it was easier to see bodies, is added to an explanation of, like, one of your engineering changes. The uh, n- n- Now, diving cliffs were not the only cliff place attraction. Uh, there was another one where you're riding on the cliffs called Surf Hill, um, it was, it was, a, it was a, basically a giant slip and slide on a mountain. Uh, the, the, mm-hmm. the original concept was to jump off a cliff and, and land on the side to continue the ride. Uh, this, 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 this idea was abandoned due to space limitations, but Surf Hill got its airborne wish via other means. Um, employee, so you had like little like, mat, like plastic mats to ride on, um, and employees would slide extra mats onto the slide to make the jumps and ramps bigger and more extreme. Eventually, a guest like, eventually a guest got too much air and broke their neck and broke their neck upon landing. Um, and guests would you know s- s- slide down the slip and slope on on, t- on and land in like this little puddle area. Um, there was like ten lanes, but there wasn't many like barriers to speak of between the lanes. So there there ought to be like crisscrossing and collisions on the slide itself. Um, the seventh lane was particularly Dangerous because that's the one that uh, employees would st- stick the mats under. When Gene discovered that the force of hitting the water at the bottom of Surf Hill could tear off bathing suits, he immediately took action by building a grandstand spectator section so people could watch. <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> so, oh, so, Gene. So people can watch. T- Every time I start to think he's not a great guy, he just does the best thing he could possibly do. <laughs> so people can do. watch teenagers take get their tops ripped oh, off. Um, Gene, and, you what a perfect libertarian. He is. He is. He is, <laughs> he is checking like, all of the boxes. Yeah. He is he is the platonic ideal of a libertarian. You've got borderline child molestation. You've got child labor. You've got uh, paying people to endanger their own bodies. You've got a complete contempt for any sort of safety regulations. You've got everything libertarians love in a he's he's. He's like he's like their Zeus. Yeah, so, uh, park employees often would sit by a nearby snack shack that offered a good view of Surf Hill, just excited to see all the injuries and lost bikini tops. Um. <laughs> God damn it, G! <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh man! Um, an, the, an, another water slide called Cannonball Falls, which is like a completely covered water slide leading into a massive, like like ten foot drop into a pool. Um, according to a, action, a, for, a, former, a former Action Park guest, there's a cluster of four or five short water slides that ended by shooting you into a lake. Various kids would fly out at various times, landing on top of each other mid-air. Um, or sometimes landing on a, on a sharp rock nearby because you, you wouldn't like, line up the jump correctly. Um, sure, right. And often, uh, lots of these like, tunnels uh, had like, very abrupt 90-degree 90, 90 turns, not a 45-degree turn. So you would like, slam into a wall and keep going because of the force of the water um, and just t- toss you in you know, a, a different direction. Um, you know, it, it, would, it would shoot your young, gnarled body into a gooey pool uh, full of crying kids and water snakes. It was awesome. Amazing. That's the end of the quote. <laughs> 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 uh, they had another whitewater rafting uh, ride called the Roaring Rapids. This one had rafts that, you, uh, that they were trying to replicate a mountain swimming hole. Uh, Gene turned up the intensity to make it another uh, 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 Class 4 Rapids s- s- simulator. Sure. Um, there was a uh, responsible for report after report, noting fractured bones and, d- and dislocated body parts. There were also exposed bolts on the underside of the tunnel and, uh, lots, of, uh, and lots of traffic in the forks of the path that would cause you know, uh, people to like, get stuck. Um, yeah, there was a you know, f- fractured femurs, collarbones, d- broken nose, and dislocated shoulders and knees. All were inside a reports filed by Action Park, uh, just o- in, in 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 the year by nineteen eighty four. Um, they had a very steep water slide called the Super Speed Water Slide, um, which would like almost like a completely vertical drop where you would have to like. Imp- park employees would say like they actually gave instructions for this one because if you fell off, you would like fall to your death like very quickly. Um, sure. So you got to have a teenager kind of r- brush over what you're supposed to do to avoid that. Yeah, yeah. Who, yeah. Um, and you would go su- super fast on this because you're, it's a, like a vertical drop. Um, and uh, most notably, it would shoot water up your ass and, and me- mess up your junk. It was referred to by staff as the freshwater enema ride. Um, <laughs> so that's fun. Um, n- another popular attraction was the Tarzan Swing. Uh, this was memorable for some good and bad reasons. It's kind of it's it's exactly what it sounds like: a giant rope swing into a, into like a, a pool of water. Um, if people held onto the rope too long, they would you know they would mess up their swing and sl- go back into like the jumping off point. That's just a problem with rope swings in general. Um, the biggest cause of al- alarm, however, was the uh, the pool of water. It wasn't like a pool of water. This was a section of the mountain that like river runoff would go into. It was freezing cold. Um, Lifeguards were forced to jump in and rescue people who forgot how to swim because they were so unprepared for the shock of the cold water. Um, now, due to line placement, there was always a large crowd of spectators that would often heckle people currently on the ride. Um, park attendees recount the crowd chanting, Pussy! at bleeding injured riders after they climb out of this freezing <laughs> pool. Um, also, the spectating, uh, also, the spectating area gave uh, a great opportunity for people who were swinging to flash the, flash the nearby crowd with boobs or dicks. Um, so yeah, that, that's the, that's the Tarzan swing. Um, I, then, oh, the, they had, they had a kayaking, uh, simulator. Um, it used giant submerged electronic fans underwater to help make turbulent conditions. <laughs> um, the kayaks would often get stuck or just tip over. And in 1982, someone fell out of a kayak, got too close to an exposed electrical wire in the underwater fan and got electrocuted and died. Uh, this was the second visitor death in the history of the park. Um, the kayak ride closed shortly after. So someone got electrocuted because of underwater fans in 1982. 
And then uh, uh, around this time, they built one of the first wave pools in the country. Um, so the wave pool was nicknamed the Grave Pool uh, for reasons that will become clear very shortly. Yeah. Um, it was a uh, 100 feet wide uh, by 125 feet long uh, pool that ca- that held between 500 and 1,000 people, often like shoulder to shoulder. It's a nightmare. Um, this was a wave pool designed by a not engineer. Um, the water was way too murky to see through. There was like a mix of like runner, uh, a mix of like um, river runoff, body lotion, human waste, and other bodily fluids from like open wounds. They got the waters really, really murky. Um, the the artificial waves would would be like a few meters tall, and they go would go on for twenty straight minutes, which is way too long for a wave pool. That that's that's not that's not how we do wave pools. Usually, it's like five minutes on, ten minutes off, or something. But twenty straight minutes of waves. Um, that's plenty of time for a good or uh, for even like a good swimmer to get in some serious trouble because you just keep getting hit by waves, and the pool gets pre- pre- pretty deep. Um, Visitors who could not swim well would quickly have water going over their heads. Um, and experienced swimmers who were used to ocean water didn't realize that the fresh wa- that like the, the pool was fresh water, so it wasn't nearly as buoyant, which would make uh, make it a, a lot more exhausting to try to swim through. Um, yeah, there, uh, every few every few minutes, uh, like after the waves were done, they would they would clear out a particular section of the wave pool to scan for any bodies at the bottom, like at at at, 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 at this at the special deep spot. They would clear everyone out to look for it. Um, former employees claimed that lifeguards at the wave pool would often claim thirty saves a day for like each for each <laughs> lifeguard. Jesus Christ! Um, where your average your average lifeguard at a pool like may only rescue one or two people an entire summer, and there were I think there was yeah. like there was like twelve lifeguards on duty. At the wave pool because it's massive, um, easily one of the scariest attractions at the park. Um, the first death happened in 1982, the same year of the kayaking death, um, and another guest drowned in 1987. Now, two deaths may not sound a lot, but that's 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 that's, that's the low tally because lifeguards were saving so many people nonstop. There were the t- t- twelve lifeguards on duty, saving about thirty people a day um, for like each one of them. It's a it's a nightmare Jesus. because it was just so big, so deep, so many people. Um, Lifeguards and staff would then give out wristbands that say CFS or can't fucking swim. So if you have one of these, <laughs> if you have one of these wristbands on, you've probably already gotten saved that day. Um, also, in, in 1984, a man had a heart attack shortly after uh, at, uh, in the Tarzan swing pool. The, the cold water believed to send him into shock, and then he died in the pool because of just how cold it was. And it, it, it like tri- tri- triggered a heart attack. Um, and then a few years later, in, sli- in slightly related news, um, not this, this, this isn't Action Park's fault, but I think it's worth mentioning. Um, there was a, a, a bus crashed on the way to the park, killing five, killing five people on the on the highway. Um, Ooh. So that that happened. Were they that, headed to the park? Yeah, yeah. They they were going okay. going to the park and it crashed. Uh, this is just this adding on to like this kind of press about the park. Um, but to, to a certain point, the more kind of danger and death were reported in media, the more the local kids and teens just wanted to go because the magic and horror of action park is that you could leave with all of your <laughs> dreams of fun and adventure and freedom come true, or you could leave in a body bag. Um, it's like, it's this like, th- yeah, it's, it's this like allure. It's what everyone really wants is a chance to risk your life. Uh, and also not travel more than a couple hours from home. Yeah, uh, so it, it, it's, it's hard to say how many people actually got hurt here. Uh, the state only requires the park to report serious injuries, quote unquote. So unless you left in an ambulance. Yeah, and we already know that he did. <laughs> <laughs> so unless you left in the decapitation amb- wasn't yeah. the serious injury no. to this guy. So yeah, unless, unless you left in the ambulance, it was almost certainly not going to be reported. Um, but stories like three months in the hospital and a six months in a body cast. And in the same day we got there, a guy got, a guy got, a guy got stuck on the cannonball loop. Another person broke their neck cliff diving. We're not uncommon. Those, those are common sentiments. People would, people would say, um, not to mention, uh, hundreds of people, uh, sure. or thousands of dislocated joints, broken boats and concussions. Um, uh, according to Newsweek. Um, a quote uh, uh, from an emergency room uh, doctor at a nearby hospital. They they claimed they admitted nearly five to ten people a day from Action Park. Um, sometimes interesting reported. Uh, awesome. Yeah. So so injuries included like ankle sprains, broken bones, cuts, concussions, dislocations, and and uh, and, uh, and and head wounds. So uh, five five to ten people in the emergency room per per day. Um, 
And actually, uh, the Vernon, New Jersey ambulances had to stop serving Action Park because they would keep busy at the park all day. The city forced Eugene to buy two of its own ambulances to have its own Action Park ambulance fleet. Oh, my God. And I bet there's nothing that Gene was more responsible with than owning his own emergency services <laughs> and crew. The majority of police calls for Vernon uh, in the day were, were for Action Park. There were, there were many fights, many brawls, because, you know, partially due to the sheer abundance of alcohol. Um, now, you, you, you may be thinking, wow, this park seems pretty dangerous. I bet their insurance bills are pretty expensive. Well, no, not really. Um, because he, here's a quote from Seth, um, from Seth Porges, the journalist who's done most of the work on Action Park. Quote, Gene didn't believe in the concept of insurance. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this this guy is like the archon of libertarianism. He is he is he's their Captain Planet. Ayn Rand and her five best friends all got special rings and summoned <laughs> Gene. And then being a libertarian, he abandoned them to make action bark immediately. So Gene thought of if you got hurt, you should deal with that problem yourself. It wasn't his problem mm-hmm, to deal with. Sure. Um, but technically, he needed like insurance to run the park. So he did what any true libertarian would do. He make, made his own fake insurance company in the Cayman Islands. <laughs> <laughs> he also used his fake insurance company in the Cayman Islands as a money laundering scheme. Um, sure. Yeah, of course. <laughs> Look, he already said he was a libertarian. When, 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 uh, when a park manager um, told Gene, like, the state says we can't do that. Gene replied, well, who the hell are they? They can't shut us down. <laughs> Oh, Gene. Oh, you beautiful, beautiful animal. <laughs> surprisingly, perfect this led creepy to, monster. Surprisingly, this led to a large scale federal investigation. <laughs> yeah, that's usually how large scale federal investigations so, start. That's that's generally the way so they kick in, off. In, in the wake of the two deaths in 1984, um, they, they investigated Action Park and found all of these like financial fraud um, elements. This resulted in a three day hearing and a 110 count indictment. Um, Gene refused to testify or appear in court, uh, but through his lawyer, he eventually pled guilty to counts of fraud, theft, and conspiracy. And he was instructed to give up control of Action Park since some of it was operated on state land. Um, so he hatched a new scheme. He, he decided to be the worst tenant he possibly could. He stopped paying bills and filing paperwork for all of his like rent to, to, to the state because the state owned some of the land. He just stopped paying. Um, he did everything he could to piss off, this, yeah. piss off this, the state landowners he was renting from. He, Look, the government can't own land, Garrison. <laughs> he, the only people <laughs> who can own land are weird libertarians. He just didn't pay hundreds of thousand dollars in rent. And yeah, somehow, like the Bundys. And somehow this worked. By the mid-80s, the state got, it always the state got so fed up with Gene that they agreed to sell him the land for, eight, for $800,000 just to get him out of the way, which he did. So then he, eventually he owned uh. all of the land Action Park was on. Because he just stopped paying rent. And the state was like, fine, you buy it. How much was rent? Uh, it's, it's unclear the exact amount, but it's a multiple, hundred thousand, multiple of hundreds of thousand dollars he just didn't pay. Um, it's, 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 and they were yeah. like, and they were like, 800 This is fine. Just leave yeah, the exactly. Alone. So it mm-hmm. was, it was probably, you know, around. He was that annoying that they were like. The squeaky like, wheel with a lawyer who of files a bunch of. of yeah. That's yeah. great. And, and like, it's, it's. Action Park perfect. became like an important part of the local economy. Um, for, for Vernon, you know, the, it brought a lot of people into this small. New yeah, what Jersey else are you town. doing in Vernon, New Jersey? Yeah, so like other businesses <laughs> had interests in keeping the park open and having good press. Um, Gene would bribe public officials. He he bought politicians' houses. Sure. Um, and he Absolutely. he found a lot of ways to put people on his payroll. You know, because like he was employing, because he was also employing all of their kids. Uh, like. <laughs> All of their kids worked for Gene, yeah. um, and according to local reporters who who personally knew Gene, specifically like got, became friends with him at the end of his life, he was most certainly involved with the mob. Um, there was a, a lot of sketchy friends Gene had, and he would say a lot of like weird, concerning things. Um, he he would he would often make jokes with high level employees. Yeah, I mean, this is the guy who heard that teenagers were having their bathing suits ripped off, and said, "Well, let's find a way for people to watch." <laughs> he would he would creepy creepy scary. I'm not surprised. He would often make jokes this. with high level employees about how like certain managers knew where all the bodies were buried. It's so, like they couldn't betray him. Um, so like he he yeah. said a lot of you know yeah, like those weren't jokes yeah no um 
So with, with, with a fake insurance company, six deaths and an unknown but very high number of, 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 of injuries, you'd expect a lot of people to sue Action Park for damages. And they, they tried, but barely anyone ever succeeded. Um, if you tried to sue Action Park, Gene would always refuse to settle. He would take you to trial every single time, and he would make the trial as long and as painful as possible. Mm-hmm. Um, Action Park would win about 93% of cases, and he, he, got, he got such such a reputation of being hard to sue um, that most lawyers just didn't even bother. Um, and he, even when he lost cases, he just wouldn't pay. Multiple times, U.S. Marshals... Yeah, he's not, he doesn't pay the government rent. He's not paying you because he killed his kid. Multiple times, armed U.S. Marshals came to the Action Park lot to collect money. And like they, they they like got to know some of the employees. Like the employees would be like, "Oh no, Greg's here again with the marshals." All right, someone, <laughs> someone, go get Gene. We we gotta we we gotta get a check or something. It's it's the U.S. Marshals. Tommy Lee Jones is here with Robert Downey Jr. <laughs> Um, uh, that was a U.S. Marshals. A, I know, I've, seen, I've seen the U.S. Marshals. It's a good movie. Okay. 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 That was such a great visual. <laughs> there, there, there are like one or two incidents that Gene did have to settle uh, related to like certain deaths, but it was it was settling out of court mostly just to shut people up, um, and for not very much money. Like I, th- I think the first death he settled for only like fifty thousand um, dollars. So yeah, but the, the death danger and scandal of Action Park didn't immediately affect the park's ability to operate. Um, and like, unlike the actual death at Action Park, Action Park's Action Park's own death was like various. It was a very slow process. Um, the '90s recession hit Action Park pretty hard, um, and then the '80s, Gene's parent company, uh, Great American Recreation, actually opened two spinoff locations. Um, that they they weren't quite as wild as the original, and both of those were forced forced to shut down in the early '90s. Um, and as the '80s came to a close and people started growing up, the danger of Action Park became less appealing to the new generation of parents. Um, and yeah. the, ba- the bad press, deaths, and lawsuits piled up, and it started impacting the park's attendance in, like, the mid-90s. Yeah, people, they got, the, what the problem is, Garrison, they took the lead out of the gasoline, and parents started caring about their kids doing things, as opposed to just, just wanting them away. Yeah. Um, <laughs> that's when everything went wrong in American society, if you ask me. The, 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 the real kicker was when uh, Gene's business partner, Bob Brennan, was found guilty of fraud and, and money laundering and sentenced to 10 years in prison. So Gene's magical money tree ran out. And by 1995, Action Park declared bankruptcy. And at the uh, end, what they, uh, their last operating season was the next summer. So then Action Park closed its gates in 1996. Um, so, you know, the, the political, you know, circle uh, that Action Park was able to exist in had come to an end. Um, two, two years later, uh, the uh, the ski resort and the park grounds were bought by an, another amusement park company named IntroWest. Uh, most of the old jerry-rigged attractions were, rip, were ripped out, and it was renamed Mountain Creek. It became a generic small-town ski resort, golf course, and water park. But the story isn't over just yet. Um, in 2010, IntroWest itself had to declare... Um, uh, had to declare bankruptcy and sell Mountain Creek Water Park and the ski resort. And Gene, who is now in his like late 70s, decided he wanted his theme park back. So he led a group of investors to gain control of the park again, and he succeeded. Um, but before he could fully enjoy turning Action Park back into, uh, before he could turn Mountain Creek back into Action Park, he died um, in, in, two, in, two, in 2012. Um, he he had he he could, he shouldn't have lasted into the twenty first. No, he was he, no. he he was seventy eight years old. He 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 died in his home in two thousand twelve. Um, two years later in twenty fourteen, Gene's son Andy, partially capitalizing on nostalgia, revived the Action Park name and added a few more kind of more actiony attractions and announced plans for a new updated version of the Cannonball Loop designed by real engineers. Uh, that did not happen. Um, and there's there's that they they they're, they're not they're not not actually building it. Uh, because in 2017, the park filed for bankruptcy again, <laughs> and a year later, uh, ownership changed hands once more. Um, a, a Vernon native and former Action Park employee, Joe Hessen, who worked at the park for 18 years, bought controlling... Sh- and then he, he, he um, went on to become like a snowboarding businessman or whatever. Um, yeah. He, cool. he bought controlling shares in Action Park... Um, and he ha- and he uh, will have he has exclusive year round oversight of the park's ski resort and water park operations, and he is the new CEO. Um, but as of 2018, Mountain Creek uh, was still in like 28 million dollars in debt to the state. 
Um, okay. Wow. And, wow. and that's kind and of... is obviously not open. Mountain Creek is open, but it's like a boring golf course with a few water slides. It's, 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 okay. it's, 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 it's not All Action right. Park anymore. It is, it's, it's a totally different thing. It's a ski resort with a few other attractions. Um, and enough. that's kind of the end of Action Park. I know in, in, in the last few years, it's gotten more popular on the internet. I know last year... There was a, a an HBO documentary came out uh, made by Seth Porges, um, who I only I only found after I did tons of research for this episode. I'm like, oh, someone already did a really good job detailing this. That's convenient. Yeah, it's pretty good, pretty fun documentary. Um, it, it's, it's 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 a great documentary. You can find a whole bunch of weird articles on this. I would recommend you re- read the New Jersey Magazine article on it. It's just hilarious. Um, but yeah, that is the place that I wish I could live at. Uh, yeah, it sounds, no, that sounds it like, sounds like a blast. <laughs> it's it's everything that I actually want from libertarianism, plus a bunch of things I don't want, which is what libertarian yeah, get. Yeah, it's, 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 it's always what you get. Yeah, with libertarians. It's like, this is why he's described as like it's a mix of Ayn Rand and Lord of the Flies. It's like all of yeah. the things combined to make this weird, like 80s specific, you know, place that is almost like a fever dream. Um but yeah, that is that is that is the story of Action Park, the probably the world's most dangerous amusement park. It not 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 the amusement park, not the amusement park with the most deaths, but the mm. most serious injuries. Absolutely, um, it, it's it's shocking how few people we have reported died there, based on like how ridiculous a lot of these riots were. I, I mean, I th- it's got to be because everyone was drunk enough that they hit <laughs> limp, you know. <laughs> So, yeah, like, the one thing I, like, understated is how many places you could get alcohol for mostly free over Action Park. Mm-hmm. So many alcohol stands, they would just give it to the 14-year-old kids. It's a, just an absurd amount of booze. Well, you can't buy this. Have it for free. <laughs> <laughs> Look, the law says you can't purchase alcohol. Doesn't say we can't give it to you. It doesn't say nothing about drinking a get on them go cuts. What's, what's the state going to do? Stop me? They can't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah that's that that is last feds they sent died on the cannonball run. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway all right God. so that is that is the episode we ran a little bit long just because there's well, so much to talk about but yeah i've never loved anyone more <laughs> i've never been more horrified by the thought of meeting somebody. no he sounds what a he's, hero he's real real creepy like listening to his yeah, his voice sounds, sounds like exactly what you think his voice sounds like like, yeah. if, like, pick after, like, think of what we've all said. Now imagine him talking. You got it. You got it. That's it. You, you got his voice. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you have any pluggables, Garrison? Um, you can find me posting about uh, Catboy Made Rave Outfits on Twitter.com at HungryBowtie. Yeah, you can. You do post about that stuff a lot. I, I do now. It's real fun. Um, yeah, just, just, just mainly Twitter, I guess, at HungryBowtie and... Read read that weird New Jersey article because it is hilarious. Yeah, yeah, and shout out to Dan O'Brien, the only person from New Jersey I've agreed to know. Um, all right, <laughs> well, <laughs> welcome to the end of Behind the Bastards, the podcast that's over now. Goodbye. Bye. Bye.